you guys, how is it going? I am really excited to be talking about this. I've been getting a lot of questions about how I declutter my house. As you know, or if you don't know if you're new here, I've been having a lot of like decluttering type videos going up on my channel lately for spring cleaning and just because that's something that I feel like I wanna share with you guys. But I've been having a lot of questions about how I declutter and that kind of thing. So I wanted to address that in a video for you guys because I felt like it would be helpful. Let's go ahead and get into it. If you think about <laughs> decluttering an entire house, it can be really overwhelming, especially if you've lived in your house as long as I have. We have lived in our house almost 10 years, which is amazing, and we are so fortunate for that. But it can be overwhelming when you have accumulated 10 years of stuff and maybe you're a procrastinator like me and you just kind of shove things in closets and you don't really look at them on the regular. I have to work really, really hard to be organized. I am someone that somewhat suffers from anxiety and depression and sometimes that can get really overwhelming and hard for me. And so sometimes I will just avoid tasks altogether. Either I'm just not motivated because I'm having kind of like a down day or my anxiety will kick up and I'll be like, oh my gosh, I have all of these things to do. I'm never going to get it done. So I, I deal with a lot of that like self-doubt stuff. That's just kind of how my life is. And it's just something that I have to fight against every single day. So like I said, if you're someone like me, who's a bit of a procrastinator, a bit of a task avoider, and someone who's lived in your home, maybe for 10 plus years, it can get really overwhelming if you have all of those things to go through. So I guess my first tip is just to take it one room at a time. I never ever think about decluttering my entire house. I don't even think about decluttering my entire garage. If I'm out there, it'll be piece by piece by piece because again, that can be kind of a catch all for us because we don't use our garage to park our cars. So yeah, I just will take it one room at a time. Don't think of your house that needs to be decluttered as a whole. So maybe do like the kid's bedroom or if you need to take it even in smaller pieces, do the kid's closet one day, then do the kid's dresser, then do like the kid's toys because I know having more than one kid, those things can accumulate so fast. We have a lot of family members in our area who love to gift our kids things, which is lovely and we absolutely adore that, but it can get really overwhelming when they have so, so many things. Take it piece by piece. Don't ever think of your house as a whole and the whole process will seem a lot more simple and a lot more easy to handle. The next tip that I have is to set a time limit for yourself. So I love the channel Style Mom XO, and if you don't follow her, you should. I'll link her down below. She's amazing. She is the queen of the power hour. I'm pretty sure that she like invented the power hour on YouTube. I'm pretty sure that's like her thing. She gives herself one hour to clean or declutter or whatever. I'm pretty sure they're usually cleaning tasks from what I have seen, but you could use the same method to declutter. You could say, okay, I'm giving myself one hour to declutter. If I'm not done, everything is just going to go back where it was. It doesn't really matter in the whole scheme of things. If you want to give yourself one day, one hour, I've done it where I I've given myself like one weekend to declutter or I'll give myself like an hour limit. So that is really, really helpful to me when I am decluttering. Then I have a set of purging rules that I always use. So the first one is decide fast. If you have things in your hands, you will often maybe give them sentimental or emotional value that they might not actually have. So if you have it in your hands and you can decide quickly whether it's staying or going, that can be so much more helpful to get things out of your life that aren't actually like building you up, fulfilling you, or making your life easier. The next rule is to handle items only once. So once you've placed it in a box to either be thrown away as garbage, donate, or to stay, it needs to stay in those boxes. Do not go back and forth. Don't be wishy-washy only handle your items once. Remember that you can always go through and have another decluttering process at another time, but during this time, only handle your items once. The next tip is set yourself some limits. So maybe you only wanna have 10 kitchen gadgets that that will fit in your particular container. So that is a good limit. Maybe it's a time limit that you're setting for yourself. Maybe you only want your kids to have a set a number of books or pajamas or something like that and you just have way too many. So set limits for yourself like that and it can be really, really helpful. And then the last rule that I have is to recognize garbage. This can be really hard, especially when you have your kids home because they will often think things are toys or have fond memories when actually it's just time to throw them away. So make sure that you are recognizing garbage and getting rid of it as needed. The next tip that I have for you guys is kind of what I just talked about. Try to do all your decluttering when your kids are not home. 
it is so much more helpful in my opinion to declutter and to even clean sometimes when my kids are not home helping. Of course, I will definitely do these things when they're home because I'm a work at home mom so my kids are with me a lot. But if I can find some time where I have to just kind of go through things, often I will start doing that when they are not home because it makes it go by so much more quickly. I don't know if you've ever gone grocery shopping without your kids, but I can get my grocery shopping done in like a good 20 minutes without my kids. But if I have them with me, it's gonna take me like an hour and a half. Same thing with cleaning and decluttering. It can take me double the time to get things done because someone needs a snack, my little guy might need to go potty, all of the things, you know, get kind of mixed in with decluttering so you don't get to necessarily dedicate yourself just to doing the decluttering. So that's definitely something that can be helpful if you have that option. If for whatever reason you don't have a childcare option and maybe you have a partner in your home or you have like someone else, like a roommate who lives in your home, maybe have them just take your kids out for a walk for an hour. So set yourself that time limit for an hour, have your kids out just playing at the park or out for a walk with someone else for an hour. It can just be so helpful and you can get things done so much more quickly. And for me, I feel like I can have such a clearer mind when my kids are not home helping me with decluttering. So when I'm decluttering, I have four, well, no, not four. I have three boxes and a trash can. So the boxes that I have set up are donate, sell, and pass on. And then of course the trash can is just for trash. Usually I actually use like one of those big clear Costco garbage bags because the trash part can add up really quickly. And that is just like 100% real life. I don't know how all of this trash adds up. We are just like three people. I don't know how it adds up so quickly, but it does and things become trash really quickly. I am definitely someone who likes to donate things. We actually have, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the buy nothing concept or if you have that in your area, but it's a Facebook group and usually they do it by small pocket neighborhoods. And my neighborhood is a participator and so I will go on there and basically post items that I want to pass on for free. I also use children's consignment stores. So if I want to donate something, I will definitely take it there. Sometimes there are things that they won't take because clearly they want to make a little bit of a profit there as well. Then those things, those additional things, I will donate to other mamas. If there's something large that I want to take the time to post on Craigslist or eBay and sell, then I will definitely do that. Or I've recently thought about opening up a Poshmark closet because I do buy a lot of like name brand things. And so I thought about opening that up and kind of selling things there. Selling things online does take a lot of, it takes a lot of time. You have to keep your ads updated and you have to respond to people. There's often a lot of flaky people who don't show up. So I feel like donating is pretty much my go-to option. If I can just give it away for free, I will. If it's something that costs me $100 plus, I will sometimes try to sell it. But other than that, I will mostly just give it away. So my donate box becomes really full really quick. So sometimes I have to have two of those. And then just to pass on, like if I have something that I know my mom would like or a cousin of mine, I do have some younger cousins who have younger babies. So sometimes I'll pass on our baby stuff to them, that kind of thing. So it's really important to make sure that you have your sections lined up and you know where things are eventually going. Because if you are decluttering, but you don't exactly know where the stuff is going after you declutter it, then it sometimes can end back up in your junk drawer, back up in your kid's closet, that kind of thing. So make sure you know where your stuff is going before you declutter. And then before I put something in my keep box, I always give it my keep test. So I ask myself these three questions. Do I use it? Do I love it? Do I need it? And a lot of the time with the use it, it's have I used it in six months or less? And if I haven't, then it goes. And this includes clothing. I use a system with my clothing hangers where I turn them around backwards. And then I can tell just by looking which clothing I have worn in the last like six months or so. I thought about actually color coding, but I'm not quite there yet. I can give you guys like a laundry room closet tour. My laundry room is my closet. It's where my clothes live. And there's kind of a couple of reasons for that. And I can actually talk about like my whole laundry room setup and give you guys a tour if that's something that you're interested in. If you want to see that, let me know down in the comments below. I would love to show it with you and talk to you about how I, you know, organize my clothes and my space. Like I said in another video, we live in a 1945 original house and the closets originally just were not big enough to share for two people. There's like, it's like the size of a coat closet in our bedroom, just one and I have to try to share that with my husband like no that's not gonna happen both of us have too many things so 
it looks like we might need to declutter in there as well. So we just have too many things to be able to hang together. Yeah, that's just my closet is my laundry room and that's just how it works out well for us. And then if there are some items that you simply like cannot even fathom getting rid of, but you know that you don't use, you can use what I call the box and banish method. And so what I will do is I will put these things in a box and I'll put them downstairs in our pantry. This is kind of like a storage area where I keep my holiday decorations, that kind of thing. So they're easily accessible if I were to want them but if I haven't thought about them at the six month mark so if I haven't thought of th these things or needed to use them in the six month mark I will then get rid of them because then in my mind I can say okay I wanted to keep this I thought that I needed it I thought that it was something that I use but it's really not it's not adding to my life at all so I will take this box and then you know divide it up appropriately whether it's to go to the children's consignment whether it's to go to goodwill whether it's to pass on to the free mama's group that kind of thing so so those are my decluttering tips. That's just how I do it. I have to be really strategic with it. Otherwise I get super emotional and attached. I don't know why, but I put a lot of emotional value on things. I have to be really strategic with myself and like purposeful when I get rid of things. That's just something that I have to do as I'm getting rid of like my clutter. So I hope that some of these tips were helpful for you guys. If they were, feel free to leave them down in the comments below. If you have been enjoying my cleaning and decluttering videos, let me know down in the comments below below as well. I love making them. They're so much fun and it's kind of like two birds with one stone. I'm able to like get all of my chores done but still film good content and have it up for you guys. So if that's something that you have been enjoying or liking let me know and I can maybe make it like a regular staple on this channel. So feel free to give this video a big thumbs up if you liked these decluttering tips. If you have any decluttering tips of your own feel free to leave them down in the comments below. I know there are some like methods for decluttering and cleaning and that kind of thing like the KonMari method and like minimalism that kind of thing I think we're kind of leaning towards like getting into those things but first we have to like scrape off this top layer of clutter <laughs> like we have to just kind of get rid of stuff and I think mostly it accumulated when Harrison was a baby I don't know why babies need so many things I honestly don't <laughs> like I think so much stuff just came into our house at that time that a lot of stuff just kind of got pushed to the side so now that he's getting bigger I have kind of time to get reorganized and time to really think about what we need in our life, what's adding to our life, that kind of thing. So that's where we're at. Let me know also where you're at in your decluttering journey. I would love to know that I'm not alone in this process. <laughs> so decluttering buddies, yay! If you're new here, if this is your first time stopping by my channel, hey, my name is Caitlin and this is Beans and Monkeys. If you would like to, I would love to have you join us. We are so so close to hitting 10,000 subscribers and I would love for you to be a part of that. So feel free to hit that red subscribe button down below. Also you guys, I did learn something. So if you wanna know when I'm having a video posted, that kind of thing, you will need to have your bell notifications turned on. So when you subscribe, you'll get notified with, with like the, my highlights basically in your subscription boxes, but you won't see every single video. You'll only get the highlights. So make sure that you do have those bell notifications turned on so you know when my videos are going live. And if you are one of my current subscribers, thank you so much for being here. You guys are the best. You're the sweetest and I absolutely adore you guys. I just want to give you a big internet hug. You guys are so, so sweet. If you would like to, I'm over on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook and you can find me over there. I do post things over there that are separate from what I post here so feel free to get a little bit more beans and monkeys if you head over there. And by the way you guys have fun today!